Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Quarantine Etiquette with the Rob Butler, episode 10. Now, I just want to reassure a few of you, as I've been looking at the comments, that even though I did faint in the last episode, Shumba very quickly brought me some smell and salts and revived me, so I'm absolutely fine. Now, I'm obviously looking at your comments and your suggestions, and something that you haven't mentioned that I thought would be quite fun is to demonstrate how to lay up the perfect drinks tray. Now, this is a necessity in every home, and I'm sure you've already got them, but obviously I just want to make sure you're doing it the correct way, and that's what I'm now going to demonstrate with, of course, the assistance of the Royal Dachshunds. So the first thing we require is a mixing jug, which goes just there, and with any mixing jug, of course, you need the spoon. So there's a large spoon that I keep just inside. Then we get the ice bucket which goes just there and two side plates, one there, one there. Make sure that the design is the correct way. This one will be for your lemons and limes and the other one is where you're going to keep your tools. So here you will have your bottle opener and obviously wine opener, a little teaspoon for mixing any small drinks and I love this, a little fork, a little pickle fork which you can use for olives, any kind of garnish or even picking up sliced lemon and lime if you don't want to use your fingers. And then obviously we've got the knife uh, for cutting the lemon and the lime. Then we come to the alcohol, so we have a decanter here. I do like my decanters, and in this one is where I keep the vodka. And then we come to another necessity of the drinks tray, the gin. So we have one gin positioned there, that's the Gordon's gin I mentioned the other day about. And we have the Rock Rose, my two favourites. And then we've got some Aperol, which I'm sure many of you know about Aperol. Uh, the reason I have it on the tray is when I offer champagne or Prosecco, I sometimes like to put a little drop in to sweeten it. I'll hasten, not very good champagne, we're talking about if it's something on the slightly cheaper side or the Prosecco, as it gives it a really nice, a really nice flavour. Then, being Scottish, this is a very important part of my drinks tray, a little decanter with some whisky. You also want to have the Angostura bitters we talked about the other day. Do you remember for making the pink gin, you put a drop of that in, but it's also good for other mixes and drinks. And for the non-alcoholic drinkers, we need some elderflower cordial, which is, a, again, something that most homes will offer you. Then we come to the glasses. I love these little ones. They're on a little tray which I got a few years ago, which I absolutely love, a little silver tray. And these are your little liqueur glasses. So if you were going to offer, say, um, a liqueur, you could even use them if you wanted for a, a little shot of whiskey. But I normally, if I'm going to offer a liqueur, this is what I will use, so say port uh, or something similar. And then for my whiskey, you can of course get specialized whiskey glasses. This is my personal choice, what I use as these go with this decanter. They were given to me as a 21st birthday present. I'll quickly add, not that long ago, he says. And I'm just going to position these just in front of that decanter. And then we need some glasses for our gin and tonics or a or vodkas or whiskies. So I'm just going to pop those just in front there. And it's also a good idea, especially before guests come in or before you actually offer the drinks tray, to put a couple of mixes on there as well. So I just place those along the back. Then we have a little Scottish noggin, which is for the water for when I'm having my whiskies. Forget the, the water inside, I've obviously just given it a quick wash, but that will have water in it. And then we also have my top glasses, the one I used the other day, which is a favourite. And I've got another small little one there for, for a smaller shot. And we're just about there. I'm also going to add uh, this little glass, which has got some rosemary for the gin. Because I mentioned the other day with the Rock Rose Gin, it's nice to add a bit of rosemary. So I pop that there just in case any of my guests wish to add some. And then lastly, and this is again something that I like to add to the tray. If anyone's making a drink, the last thing you want is for them obviously to go and 
get any kind of spills on this because then you've got to replace the whole cloth. So I then get a napkin, which I then fold in half and I place it just in front of the glass. Just do a little bit of manoeuvring here. I place it just in front of the glass so that when they're making their drinks, then that's all I've got to replace. And then one very important last thing we must have on the tray is some milk for the puppies because when they want to come and make their drinks, I need to make sure that there's obviously a non-alcoholic uh, selection here for them. Now, Shimba, as you're the eldest, would you like to check the tree over and make sure you're happy with how it looks? Very good, Shimba. Now, when it comes to the wines, the white wine will obviously be in the fridge. I have been taught that with white wine, you shouldn't over chill it if it's a good white wine. The idea is you only slightly chill it. You don't want it to be so cold you can't taste it. But again, this is something you either keep in the fridge or be kept in one of the other rooms that you bring in as and when it's required. And it's the same with the red wine. Obviously, the red wine is not going to be kept on the bar. You can normally keep it, let's say, if you've got your wine cellar, you obviously will bring it up and sit it in your ladder or somewhere just out of the way until it's time to serve it. And then you can offer these. If you know you've got a guest that is a wine drinker and they are going to drink quite a lot of white wine, then it's a good idea maybe to put it on the tray in a, a wine cooler. Um, but again, it depends on, on who's coming around and it also depends on space. Now, I think it's a good opportunity as the tray is ready and it is almost lunchtime. It's what we call pre-lunch drinks. I'm going to inform the Dashants and especially the younger puppies that they can now come and make their drinks or what we like to call mocktails. Mocktails, I quite like that. Hmm. As it's Saturday evening, I've put on my usual evening attire, which I'm sure all of you uh, dress appropriately the same in the evening. And I'm now going to demonstrate how to open a bottle of champagne the correct way, because there's nothing nicer than on a Saturday evening having a glass of fizzy champagne. Now, I'm going to demonstrate the correct way of opening this, which is firstly, you remove the foil and you find this little piece here and pull right round like that. And then the top just comes off nicely. This part is called the cage and we're going to remove it like this. So bend that down and twist. Now, I always put my hand just above with the napkin just in case of a sudden explosion. We certainly don't want any kind of sudden explosions in the dining room. Once it's unwrapped, you can then remove it, keep your hand just above the cock. And then what we do is we turn the bottle clockwise and the cock goes anti-clockwise and eventually, very gently, you get a When pouring champagne, it's a good idea to pour a small amount in each glass. And then you should be able to then fill it up. Just at a very gentle, slow pace. You will also see some people will tilt the glass when you come to pour it. That's to help with the fizz. It's not a necessity, but it can assist. And there we have to beautifully presented glasses of champagne. I hope you all have a lovely evening at home. 
uh, with either your glasses of champagne or whichever drink you may enjoy. Cheers. Mm, that's quite delicious. Mm. <clears throat>